Okay, hopefully everything's working. I'm waiting for you to show up on my followed channels so I can tune in. I didn't advertise this at all, and I don't normally stream on Wednesdays, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, you, your fans are going to get that go live. No, apparently a lot of people have been telling me that notifications for when people go live have not been working for a while. It's Will! It's Will! Hi, Will! It's, see, we're starting, so it's not past your bedtime. Will goes to bed really early because he's old. I've been there. <laughs> I've been old before. Yep. I'm doing it right now, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. How's it? You still you making it to work on time now you got to wake up real early? So far, so good. So far, so good. Yep. That's now good. that I'm back in the office, I haven't missed. I haven't been late once yet. Knock on wood. That's good. You get off at five now, right? Yep. And on Fridays, I get off at four. So, you know, well, hell. living that sweet life. That's a sweet life. I wish I had that <laughs> life. I mean, you do kind of make your own schedule, Jen, so. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I don't wake up until, is my camera backwards? Uh, yes, it would appear that it is all flipped. Uh, I don't know. It didn't look flipped when we were looking at this before. I feel was like it? This, this has happened before. This has definitely happened before. Look at those Look at hearts. those hearts. You're just looking at my boobs. <laughs> Don't try to fucking play but it I, like I, that. You know what? I applaud the effort to, to make <laughs> it seem like it was it was not that. <laughs> That's okay. That's why they're right there. If I didn't want you to see them, I'd have it zipped up all the way. So my my it matches. So it's look, okay. there's Calamity Ganon. Hello. Hi, Chris. Hello. Chris is always excited for our show to start. Well, we should probably start the show, Jen. Uh, already? We just got do whatever here. You want. Whatever you want to do. That's fine. Okay, well, I don't know how to start a show. I've never started a show before. All right, okay. am I well, supposed so to do the intro? Oh, my God. Hi, guys. Welcome to the first episode, if you ask me. Is that Was that a good one? That was pretty solid. It's okay. a good start. All right. I haven't been practicing. That was just my... First, my first attempt at it, guys. Oh, that was solid. Yeah, okay. That's a good first effort. <laughs> that was a good. So, what? Uh, what are we? What was the show about, Jen? What are we doing here? I don't. The show is about us just talking about the things that we. I always say like the media we consumed, but I feel that sounds really weird. But that's really just what it is. It's what it is. <laughs> like sometimes we watch movies, sometimes we watch TV shows, sometimes we read comic books or novels or <laughs> listen books. to music. <laughs> Picture books, okay? <laughs> um you'll tell us about new albums that uh, you're excited about. Yeah, and sometimes stuff like that. It's just kind of whatever whatever you know sometimes we'll watch new movies sometimes we'll watch old movies like you know can we talk could just talk about random topics if we want of course if somebody in the chat has like a random topic that they think we should talk about we could talk about that too there is no solid plan or schedule for this show whatsoever we're just on the fly well, so, I mean, on the fly here, Roth, uh, Roth Sothi or Roth Sothi, I don't know the pronunciation, forgive me. Uh, but favorite Halloween candy. What's your favorite Halloween candy, Jen? Well, I don't actually buy Halloween candy, so... That's not the question, Jen. <laughs> if you let me finish, <laughs> Mary just gave me a Snickers brownie, and it was delicious because instead of like the nougat, it's a brownie, but there's still peanuts in the caramel yeah. on it. I sounds I, pretty good. I thought it might be a little too rich, but Snickers generally are very rich to me. I can only have like a couple of bites. Like if you try to eat the whole thing, I get really sick. So it was delicious. I only had the little tiny mini one. I could have eaten like three of them, but I controlled myself and I only had one. And very responsible. It was very good. I was very good. I really liked it. New. I don't know about my favorite, but it's a new one. So That you're excited about. I'm excited about. I did try the Oreo Twix. 
I didn't really like that one as much. I usually really, really like Oreo, but didn't hit it for oh, me. My favorite usually is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Yeah, for sure. I love Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Yeah. But my girlfriend is allergic to peanuts, <gasps> so uh, I'm not having the, the peanut butter flavored stuff so much anymore because, you know, I, I don't want her to have a reaction. So second favorite, rising in the rankings, Twix. I'm a big Twix guy. Twix are good. You got to try the Oreo one. Let me know what you think those. about the Oreo one. But Twix are good. Twix are soft. I'm usually pretty obsessed with Kit Kats. I can eat about like 50 Kit Kats. Have you day. seen the variety of Kit Kats that they have all over the world? I've seen the like. like Japan, Japan has like 50 different flavors of Kit Kats. What? I it's know insane. They, have, they have like a strawberry one or something like that. Did they carry those at like H Mart here or anything? I have not checked, but they got they got all sorts of different kinds of Kit Kats. You should love, look into that. I love Kit Kats; it's so good. I like actually my favorite Kit Kat is the Big Cat. Is it just like one big, like stick? Yes. Instead of the breakable ones. Yeah, it's like a Snicker size, but oh, like okay. you really get like a lot of wafer and a lot of chocolate because it's so big. I definitely I love me a Big Cat. Okay, I have another random question for you. We didn't I didn't prepare this, but you know, today happens to be National Sandwich Day. Why is there a national day for everything? Lobbyists, what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, <laughs> so National Sandwich Day, what's your favorite sandwich? Or like, you know, t- today on like the Rod Ryan show, which is one of the local, you know, morning shows, they were talking about their Mount Rushmore of sandwiches. Do you have a Mount Rushmore of sandwiches, Jen? Um what do you mean? Like your your top four favorite sandwiches. Actually, I'm a pretty basic person. When I go to Jimmy John's, Subway, Firehouse, I just like turkey. I just get turkey, lettuce, mayo, and cucumbers. That sounds like a solid sandwich. It's just a basic, pretty basic sandwich. Nothing exciting. My favorite sandwich is very, very similar, actually, is turkey mayo and then i like to get a couple strips of bacon and uh red onions oh red onions okay when i give it a little 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 kick have you been to jersey mike's yeah that's i ate there i ate there for lunch today because it was national sandwich that's (laughs) that's uh evan's favorite so we've been going there and i like the rosemary bread it's a little too like it's a lot of the flavor you know like they put the oregano and the yeah. vinegar and stuff on it but i like hot sandwiches so usually i'll go buy a sandwich come home and microwave it so i really, I don't really like cold sandwiches yeah, I, like I had cold. the i got the big kahuna from jersey mike's today which, which is that? a it's a philly cheesesteak with jalapenos and uh something else on it i forget it was good but yeah sandwich day sandwich day <laughs> happy birthday sandwiches yeah, we know which sandwich chain got to Good Game Grizz. Yeah, they they got me. The truth is, I was listening to the radio this morning on my way to work, and they were talking about National Sandwich Day. I was like, mm, I should get a sandwich for lunch. And then there's a Jersey Mike's right next to my office. So I was like, done. Let's do it. <laughs> it's not a bad place to have next to your office. Yeah. Oh, and Chick-fil-A too, right? I do have a Chick-fil-A near the office as well. I eat so much Chick-fil-A. They're pretty good on when you're on a diet, honestly. The, the grilled grilled nuggets... Yeah. Really not bad. That's just what I get. I just get a whole box of grilled nuggets, and I'm really sad because all I'm eating is grilled nuggets. But, you know. The trick is you go the grilled nuggets, and then, like, uh, they're regular just, like, mustard because there's no calories in the in the mustard either. So that way you still have something you can dip it in. I do not like mustard, but I have come around to their honey roasted barbecue mustard. Very good as well. That one's also very good. low carb, certainly in comparison to other barbecues. Yeah, it was very, it's the one I usually go for. It's pretty good. All right, well, the, the thing that we're mostly talking about for this stuff, though, is media that we're, we've been consuming. So let's dive in, Jen. Let's, we're going to talk about our first topic. Uh, and so I was thinking, if you ask me, our first topic should be Dune. <laughs> All right, watch this, everybody. Oh, wait, and then I have to press this button. Yep. <gasps> oh my gosh, look, it's the picture of the thing we're about to talk about. <laughs> I did it. All right, now I well need to done. turn it off. 
And then go like this. And there it goes. <gasps> wow. Fucking high tech over here, guys. Better look out. Here it Jen comes. Jen is up her game. <laughs> That's true. I've never <laughs> done that before. I didn't know there was a transition button thingy. So, you know, thanks, Jeff, for teaching me. No problem, Jen. <laughs> but yeah, so Dune, we're talking about today, uh, directed by Denis Villeneuve, just came out a couple of weeks ago, right? A couple of weeks now? 22nd. Very, very recently. Uh, so, Jen, you and I have not talked about this yet because yes. we knew we were going to talk about it here together. So, uh, do you want to kick it off? Tell us what your thoughts are on Dune. No, you go first. Okay. So, I'm a big Denis Villeneuve fan. Like, yes. I've, I've really enjoyed all of the movies of his that I've seen, and I've seen, like, ten of his movies. So, yes. really, a really big fan of everything he does, especially the sci-fi stuff. Blade Runner 2049, top-tier movies all time for me. So yeah, good. Absolutely. Uh, so I had very high expectations coming in to Dune. Uh, I knew that it was just going to be the part one, the first part of the book. I've never read the book, but so I knew that I probably wasn't going to get an ending that would be like fully satisfying because obviously it's not the whole story. But I really enjoyed it. I, I you know, I'm sure some people were a little turned off by the slower pace of the movie because it, it's definitely not like an action-packed Marvel movie, like start to finish, but. I did like the sequences of the action that they had, and even though I would say Timothy Chalamet or Timothée Chalamet, as I like to call him, uh, he's very brooding in this, uh, and so I was actually kind of curious. Jen, you've read Dune, right? I haven't read all of it. I have read. Yeah, read of all, it, but, but you read some of it. Is he that brooding in the book? I, that's the young, skinny, the main character, right? Yeah, the main I, character, Paul. Paul. Yeah, Tim, Paul. Timothy Chalamet plays Paul. Which, um, in terms of, like, names for heroes, Paul oh, is, like, the least epic name Jessica, for a hero. It's Dune <laughs> with all these crazy world names and spies and, and Arrakis. Paul. And then it's Paul and Jessica. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I don't know. I don't. I didn't think he was brooding. I in the book know. or in the movie? In the movie. I thought he was, you know, I thought he was angsty as all get out. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> which I didn't I mind. Guess, I thought it was good. I think I don't. I don't associate angsty with brooding. I think angsty is probably like a better word. But okay, we'll yeah. go with that. Yeah, I would say. So. Yeah, I uh, despite it being like very like angsty, I I still really liked the character of Paul. I thought that they did a great job of showing uh, him developing in, into the character that we're going to see in the second half of this story. Uh, because, you know, learning some new abilities, getting trained. I, I didn't feel anything was rushed. Uh, and it had that grand epic scale that I wanted from a movie like Dune. Uh, you know, this big sweeping vistas, giant monsters, you know, all sorts of, you know, cool stuff like that, cool sci-fi stuff that Denis Villeneuve has shown time and time again that he knows how to do. Uh, so I, I really, really enjoyed it. I, I Not a perfect movie, but... Yeah, really freaking good. Like nine out of ten for me. That's pretty. Solid. If you ask me. If, <laughs> if you ask me, <laughs> that's the name of the show. Oh my god, that's so the name cool. of the show. That's so cool. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Your idea. <laughs> I know. Well, that's a great because you want to say it all the time. You know, great marketing and stuff. Um. Yeah. So. I liked it. I didn't love it. I definitely like it a lot less than most people. I think every person that I have talked to generally rates it like a nine or, you know, one of the best sci-fi movies that I've ever seen. Um, it's, it's visually stunning, like absolutely amazing. You get like the mood and the vibe from like, I feel like there could be like no, um, like no, I don't want to say like no dialogue, but just like the scenery and then just like the music like you, I feel like you could, I don't know, you could take out the people and it would still be like a really cool movie. You're not wrong. The the score is awesome. Yeah. For Dune. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I know how much stuff they left out of it. So it's hard to get like excited when you know, like they don't, I think Jessica is a really great character and they really show more of her abilities in the book. It's like a, they go way more into like her character and her personality and her dialogue is really great. And so it's just they they cut out a lot of 
the character development and the world development. Like this is this book is so rich of lore and they really had to cut out a lot. Like it, it it's a great movie, but it really should have been a mini series. And so just the fact that it wasn't I I am disappointed, but that's not the movie's fault. That's just what I was it I mean, it's not not the movie's fault that yeah. they, they chose to go this this route. Also, a lot of the story of the the sisterhood, uh, I, I never remember how to pronounce the Benet Zaria or whatever whatever it's called. Bene They're Gesserit. doing a uh, Bene Gesserit, Thank you very much. They're doing a, a TV show on HBO Max about oh, them. I didn't so, know that. Okay, well that's very interesting because they are definitely my favorite part of the book. And... So it's possible that they knew that they were going to do that, and so that didn't get included in the movie, or maybe this, you know. It, it's just happenstance that they're doing this TV show and Denis Villeneuve didn't explore them that much in the movie. I don't know. But uh, if you're interested in that, it, it is something they intend to show us more of. So I'm excited for that. I will say also, I didn't think the acting was like amazing, especially Jason Momoa. I did not, was not really like, I mean, I guess he was playing a pretty simple brooding, like, badass character but i don't know he was just cheesy. he was kind of playing jason momoa yeah i didn't feel like he was acting i feel like he was just like talking his lines but there was yeah. no acting to it and so but he I, is playing a guy named duncan idaho yeah <laughs> but i don't know I I, I I i personally thought that that fit that jason momoa fits that characterization well Although it's not, like you said, not like a brilliant performance on his part because he's not really having to break out of his own personality to play that. It was basically just Aquaman in space. So... <laughs> I would watch that movie for sure. <laughs> He'd have some troubles not being able to talk to the fish. <laughs> Alien fish. Well, so I wanted to mention some of the stuff that I'm seeing here in the chat. Uh, Roth says Kyle McLaughlin played him well. I never saw the, uh, the uh, David Lynch Dune in which it's Colin horrible. McLaughlin... I tried to watch it a couple weeks ago before the movie. Oh my gosh. It was, I feel like it was a movie that was literally made for the people that read the book. If you never read the book, you're just like, I don't understand who this is or what's going on or anything at all. And it still wasn't like a very good movie in my opinion. Oh, and it's funny you mentioned that because Beta Ray Will in the chat says, I feel this movie takes for granted, you know, the backstory from the Lynch movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, like, the Lynch movie obviously went more in-depth on a lot of this stuff uh, than Denis Villeneuve's because it was, you know, more spread out. Well, no, it was the than... whole... I'm talking about the movie, not the miniseries. Oh, that's right. So... Yeah, so... It was really even more condensed. It was even more condensed for... Yeah. Then I don't know. Yeah. I didn't enjoy it. I Did you... So, okay. Which one was Sting in? Was he in the miniseries or in the movie? I don't know. You know, Sting from the police. I did see the miniseries, but it was also <laughs> like six years ago. And I remember I really liked it. That's what actually got me interested in Dune. I watched the miniseries and then I watched Children of Dune and I really liked it, but I don't remember hardly anything about it because... Right. Sting was in the 1984. Thank you, Roth. And I will, my other thing about the movie is I'm very upset. I totally fine with a slow burn, totally fine with the direction and the pacing of the movie and everything. But it really upsets me that they knew it was going to be a two part movie and they have not even like started filming. They say it's not going to come out for two years. And it's like, if well, you... yeah. So, I mean, it's like we, we knew it was a two part movie in that Denis Villeneuve only made the first part, but he didn't know that they were going to pick it up for the second half. That was not guaranteed. But the, they, literally, like, two days after the movie came out, they announced that it was getting... The yeah, I mean, I mean your projections after your opening weekend, you can kind of tell if you're going to make enough money to have made it worthwhile. So that that's actually not... I mean, like, uh, a lot of movies, they'll do that, where they'll come out with the movie and then s announce the sequel the next weekend. At the beginning of like, the movie, it literally says part one. Yeah, so Denis they, Villeneuve was taking a shot here. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if it didn't come out and you're watching this movie and that's the movie you get and it says part one and then you just never get part two? So... I can imagine that because I watched the three Chronicles of Narnia movies and never got the rest of Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, I know, I know exactly how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> it feels bad. It feels bad. It does feel bad. <laughs> Same with It Chapter One. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, well, 
I didn't really. I prefer the TV series for it anyway. You like Tim so, Curry? Uh, yes. And I did not find what is Bill Skarsgård, whatever. I didn't think that he was scary. I just thought he was like really weird. little goofy. Yeah, it was goofy. It was not scary. I didn't. The scariest parts of that movie, and I'm a huge scaredy cat, as you know, Jen. I do not like horror movies, but I watched it, chapter one and chapter two, and honestly, the scariest parts are all jump scares. In yeah. those, it's not so much about Skarsgård's performance. Although I will mention Skarsgård. How many freaking Skarsgårds are there? Because Stellan Skarsgård played uh, the 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 villain of Dune. The big flying fat man is oh, is a Skarsgård. Really? Like they're related, or they just happen? To yeah, have the it's same name? it's Bill's dad. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, Stellan Skarsgård, who you will also remember, he like you probably don't recognize him from Dune as being this guy, but uh, you saw the first Thor movie, Once yes. Upon a Time. Once yes, Upon a Time. He is the physicist that Jane Foster is working with. Oh, okay, yeah. That's the same actor. That's also same from guy? Goodwill Hunting. Yep. I've seen that movie. That's a good movie. It's a great movie. I don't remember anything about it, but I remember... I want to be sure that we're clarifying. Goodwill Hunting is a great movie. You're not saying Thor was a great movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think I think Thor was, like, okay, but definitely I did mention great as in Goodwill Hunting, so... Okay. <laughs> yeah, the Skarsgård family, there's a lot of them. And it's, it's not just... Uh, it, it's Stellan and Bill, and I think he's, he has two other sons that are actors as well, and I believe one of his brothers... One of Stellan Skarsgård's brothers is an actor. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of Skarsgårds. They make up like, you know, 0.006 of the Actors Guild. <laughs> is that a joke or for real? Uh, it's an estimation, but it's probably not that far <laughs> off. <laughs> well, it wasn't... Uh, what's his face? He was in that Stephen King uh, TV show that I watched. That was really good. I don't remember what it was called. Lisey's No, it thing, wasn't another one. Was it The Outsider? Was that the one he was in? I don't remember. I don't know. I can, I can find out. Castle Rock. There you go. Good job. Castle Rob. Rock. Castle Rock. Castle Rock is great. I really. Is it, I think that one ended where it should have been another season. I didn't watch anything other than what was out. Oh, I didn't. I don't think I watched season two. I'll have to watch that then. Once seasons are over, I forget about the show. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, when it comes out, I'll watch it again. And then I totally forget that it <laughs> existed at all. And then you end up waiting until the whole thing is done. And you'll go back to it and watch it all at once? Maybe. Maybe. I should. That <laughs> one's a good one, and I do like Stephen King. So, bye, Will. See you later. Bye, Thanks Will. for coming. Appreciate you stopping by. Well, yeah, so uh, I'm asking you. Oh, wait. This is the show, If You Ask Me, and I'm asking you, Jen. Do, do you have, like, a rating number for Dune for you? Would you On a 10-point scale? Uh, but that's so hard because I feel like I'm not rating the movie. I'm definitely, like, biased in rating my expectations. So I'm going to give it a seven. Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's still, it was still a really good movie. So. Certainly by what we, we know your standards to be for movies. Yeah, so you know, a seven, good. that's pretty solid. That's pretty from, good. From Jen. Yeah. The way, the way I usually rate stuff, a five is like, this is a movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, if I can feel completely neutral, that's a five. If I enjoyed it at all, it's going to get a six. <laughs> It's a good, but you gave it a nine. So you yeah, no, I, I really, really loved it, and you know, and I'll openly admit that I'm biased in favor of Denis Villeneuve. So <laughs> well, at least you admit. I guess we're both biased. Movie. So pick a bias for you, I guess. But <laughs> average even, it out, it's an eight. It's an eight, <laughs> exactly. I was like, okay, that's solid. All right, I like that. It's an eight. There you go. Oh wait, well, but my favorite part of the movie was when there was a gin worm. <laughs> Jeff, you made this. It looks so gross. So I, gross. It looks like a butthole, a black butthole on my mouth. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. That's a questionable yep. one. <laughs> Good job, Jeff. Better or worse than the SpongeBob where I just took your eyes and nose and mouth and put it on SpongeBob's body. I really liked that one, but you wouldn't have known it was me if you wouldn't have said anything. But I think I like that. I like that subtlety. It's more of a disguise, you know, than just a meme. So, all right. Well, that's okay. Ah, I did it. Okay. All right. Next. Yeah, so the next thing that we're going to talk about here uh, is something that you wanted to talk about. Yes. 
And that is a movie called Good Time, yes. starring Robert Pattinson. A movie called Good Time with Robert Pattinson. So this was actually, I'm pretty sure my... This oh, was, no, Jen, what? start the segment with the catchphrase. Well, if you ask me... <laughs> this sounded like butters. <laughs> it sounds just like butters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Anyways, pretty sure that was my first introduction to Robert Pattinson. I never watched Twilight. So I think that's the first Robert Pattinson movie I have ever seen. Wow. You didn't watch uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? That doesn't count. That's not a Robert Pattinson movie. Okay. I wouldn't say it's a Robert Pattinson movie, but it, you know, he's I in the movie. I have seen it. I have seen okay. it. Okay. Uh, and I lied, by the way. I've seen The Lighthouse. That movie oh, was right. terrible. <laughs> that was, yeah. That, that's a take. A, a that... lot of people really love The Lighthouse. Maybe people, I people watch... have a, they, they have a thing for Willem Dafoe. I haven't uh, seen The Lighthouse, so I don't know for sure, but a lot of people love Willem you Dafoe. You haven't seen The Lighthouse? No, because I heard it was scary. I, well, I like horror, so I didn't think it was scary. I just thought it was really weird. There's this whole thing with a mermaid, and I don't even... It takes you places. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting movie, at least. You should watch it just because it's interesting. So, um, anyways, good time. Um, I, I was preparing for Batman since I've never seen him in anything before. Wanted to see something. Yeah, the lighthouse was fucked up. <laughs> um, yeah, but I didn't really know what to expect from the movie. It's about Robert Pattinson, who has a mentally handicapped brother who gets put in jail. And it's about him trying to break him out. Well, I guess he gets arrested and Mentally then, handicapped brother gets arrested? Yes. Yes. And so it's him trying to, Robert Pattinson trying to break his brother free. Um, I, I don't want to, yeah. I'm very bad at giving synopsis without like ruining anything. Yeah, so, we don't want to spoil these things for you. Right. But that's the general premise is he's very close to his brother. He's attempting to break him out of jail. And honestly, I started watching it and I was like, I don't know. You can tell it's pretty low budget. It's actually the same. I cannot. Sadisky, Sadasky, the people that made Uncut Gems. Yes, it's, the, it's a so, softy. Softy, there you go. Um, Benny and Josh softy. So softy. Uncut Gems. This is. I was reading a lot of facts about this movie after it after I watched it, and so apparently they had made. We have a question in the chat. If you had to choose Human Centipede or Lighthouse. Well, that's a tough question for her, apparently. <laughs> I mean, Lighthouse was definitely more like, like, Human Centipede was like, okay, that's gross. But Lighthouse was like, that's weird. So, you know, I guess you would be like weird. They're both kind of, they're both gross. Well, Human Centipede was more of like a shock, I think. And Lighthouse is just really weird I feel like I, and again i haven't seen either but i feel like they buried the lead a little bit with human centipede because it's like you know exactly what's going to happen because the movie is called human centipede did you see the south park episode yes of course i've seen the south park <laughs> yes episode. human centipede the centipede perfect south park gets it right every time anyways this movie um yeah so Robert Pattinson had actually seen a uh, movie poster for one of their previous low-budget movies, and he contacted them and was like, hey, I saw your movie poster. I really want to work with you guys. So they literally wrote this movie for Robert Pattinson to star in. And I didn't know this at the time, but apparently it's called Mumblecore, where only Robert Pattinson and the brother had scripts. Everybody else in the movie was just told their character and their character's backstory, and they just improved. So, which is really cool because when you you're like, wow, this person's like a pretty good actor. That's really interesting. They're really not. I mean, they're acting, but they're not just like reading a script. It seems like so much more genuine. So, I feel like that really in itself makes the movie like super super interesting, especially considering all the things. It's kind of like what I say. It's like a train wreck or whatever car crash. You can't help yeah, but just you can't like take your eyes off. Yeah, it's definitely. That's what I was like going to ask. That. 
is it chaotic like uncut gems i felt a lot of the scenes are so chaotic that yes. it, you know it makes me uncomfortable now granted uncut gems was designed to make you uncomfortable uh is it the same similar sort of vibe for good time yeah definitely actually um evan had not we finished watching it and he was like that really reminded me of uncut gems and he Googled it and was like, oh, yeah, look, it's like the same people. It's definitely the same vibe for sure. Um, and it was just really interesting. I don't, I didn't think it was a movie that I really would have liked. And it's, it's just very interesting. And I love the concept of the mumblecore. It definitely has scenes that make you uncomfortable. That is definitely true. So. So uh, Bop or Boppy123. Uh, Uncut Gems was one of the best movies of the past few years, in my opinion. That is, he's far from the only person to have that take. Yeah. A lot of people really loved Uncut Gems. I think it made me too uncomfortable to like actually enjoy it. Like that's how effective it was at making me uncomfortable. Uh, so it was. It's not going to be one of my favorites, but it is one of those movies that I really feel like the director, the directors achieved what they were going for. Do you feel like Good Time they, did, does it reach that same level of success? I mean, honestly, I think if you liked Uncut Gems, you should check out Good Time. It It's lower budget because it's, you know, they were not, that's really what got them, Uncut Gems really what made them, like, famous, but, I mean. It's, this movie came out two years before Uncut right, Gems. Right, yeah. So, I really think if you liked Uncut Gems, you should check out Good Time. It's really good. And uh, there's just... You're always, you're just like, oh, how could this possibly get any worse? And then it does. And you're just like, but you're like, oh my God, okay. Like you get really invested in this character and, you know, what he's doing. And, uh, I mean, the acting is great. Uh, I I would never have expected Robert Pattinson to act like that, even though, just because all I knew really was Twilight. And it's uh, like the exact opposite character. Twilight is so bad. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm a guy who tries to tries to find things to like about movies. That, you know, you know this about me, Jane. I always want to find something to like. I truly do not like the Twilight movies. They are bad. I read Just the books. Bad. I read the books. I didn't. <laughs> I remember I was reading the book. My favorite part about the book. I don't know if this is in the movie. I've never seen it. But there is a part where they got married and they're in this like you know they're having sex and he literally fucks her unconscious. Yeah. Like, and I'm just like. This is a romantic, like, for teens. not for teens. <laughs> and then my other favorite part was she gets pregnant and he has to give her a C-section with his teeth. And I don't know if that's you in do. the movie. I Because it's her, she's a vampire, so her skin. Her skin is invincible now. Right. So he Except to a vampire teeth. Eat, eat her. I don't, Open. that's so weird. <laughs> yeah, that it's for kids or teens or whatever. I don't know if that was in the movie. I want to watch the movie just to know if they put that really weird oh, stuff in there. You should watch the movies, and in particular, and, and I guess you've read the books. The question I always have after talking about Twilight movies with anyone is whether or not they think Bella's dad is a good dad. Is Charlie Swan, that, I think that's his name, is that is he a good father? Because every, oh, I have tons of friends who are like, "Oh, he's just trying so hard, and you know, he so he and he really cares about her." I'm like, but does he though? Because he remember. lets his daughter marry a vampire, like after you know, like they're still in high school, and doesn't ask any questions. <laughs> <laughs> she locks herself away for like a month. Yeah. He doesn't, doesn't do anything about it. Like, <laughs> I mean, she's a teenager. What do you expect, Jeff? They're just. I like expect that. him. <laughs> To say, knock it off, Bella. Go to school. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted oh, him so to say just once. So you're going to be one of those controlling fathers, huh? Go to school. I... Yeah, until you graduate <laughs> high school, go to school. <laughs> <laughs> That's asking a lot, I think. Yeah, especially if you're hooking up with a uh, vampire who, who glows in the sun. <laughs> <sighs> just the concept of that whole situation. Also, we're just... The whole werewolf falling in love with a baby. That, yes, that's all was that in the movie pretty too? Pretty messed up. Cause, yep. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I'm telling you, I was reading those books and I was like, "What the hell is going on right now?" Yes, he literally sees an, a baby just born and is like, "Oh, it's my soulmate." That's my this soulmate. Baby, <laughs> it's my soulmate. Can't wait for her to turn eighteen. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh my god, so bad. 
Yeah, R. Kelly vibes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that whole section of the book is all about grooming and not like how a werewolf should groom himself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and Clem to Ganon. Ganon, Twilight is so bad, it makes a Russell Brand movie seem good. And that's true. I enjoyed Get Him to the Greek far more than <laughs> any Twilight movie. <laughs> I've never seen a Russell Brand movie. You didn't see Forgetting Sarah Marshall? No. That's that. I think that's a very good, very good comedy. Forget, forgetting Sir Marshall is pretty funny, but Russell Brand is pretty terrible in most other movies. <laughs> is he still a thing? I remember he was a thing for a while. Yeah, I mean, he's not so much a thing in movies anymore. I, I, I think he has a podcast and he's doing some like activism things, uh, you know, and getting in arguments on social media with people, you know, that sort of deal. As you do. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, good, time. good time. The question is, was it a good time? It was a great time. I, I nine out of ten. I liked oh, it more damn. than Dune. I know that sounds crazy, but in terms of like movie experience, I was way more interested. I mean, but I guess it is like a lot more action packed. But just I love the the uh, mumble core. Like I didn't know that was a thing. You love the concept. Though. I love the concept. I re so I think I just the concept really took it over the top for me. So. I'm very curious about it because I, like I said, Uncut Gems, I think is a very well-made movie and does exactly what it sets out to do, but I didn't have fun with it because I, it made me so uncomfortable. So I'm, 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 I'm curious if I should still give Good Time a shot. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I, it, you make it sound so good. <laughs> I really loved it. I liked it more than Uncut Gems, but I like, I think like the plot and stuff better and... I, but Adam Sandler was really great in that too. So, in Uncut Gems, yeah, yeah, I recommend yep, and, it. And Climate Troll uh, thinks I should give it another shot. What's the worst that could happen? The worst thing that could happen is I waste a few hours. Gives and I've certainly wasted nightmares. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, I suppose that would be the worst that could happen. <laughs> I have horrible nightmares about you know getting trapped in a glass box while in a jewelry store. Yeah, okay, I guess yeah. that wouldn't be, yeah, that would not be good. But yeah, I mean, I probably should give it another shot. Uh, but yeah, so that that was good. Uh, Jen, right. if, if you ask me what we should talk about next, and you are asking me what we should talk I'm about I'm always next, asking you what we should talk about next. We should talk about the new movie that just came out, Last Night in Soho, directed by Edgar Wright. What? This one? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Oh, wow. Look, it's right there. There it is. There it so, is. Uh, are you familiar with Edgar Wright, Jen? I don't know. Okay, he directed Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I oh, hate it. Okay, he directed Hot Fuzz. Oh, love Hot Fuzz. And Shaun of the Dead. Uh, okay. And uh, The World's End. Yeah, that's the other one. From his Cornetto trilogy. Uh, he directed Baby Driver. I liked Baby Driver. That and was I really okay, liked Baby Driver. so I guess I'm so, a fan. Yeah, so I mean, he has a wide variety of movies that he has done. Some, some very you know, like, like clearly comedy movies, uh, but then he's also done more serious stuff like Baby Driver and now Last Night in Soho, which is not a comedy at all. <laughs> it is, and it's a, a it, it is legitimately a horror movie. Oh, but really? I did not know that. But it's, I think, in terms of horror movies, it's more, it, it's still a horror movie, but it is also very much a thriller, and that's the part that I really liked about this movie. Uh, the premise of the movie is a young woman is moving to London to become a fashion designer. She's going to fashion school in London. It's, uh, she's played by Thomasin McKenzie, uh, who was in Jojo Rabbit. And uh, Thomasin McKenzie moves to London, and she moves. Uh, she first moves into the dorms on campus and has a really bad first night with her roommate. You know, roommate's a total bitch. You know, just awful, awful experience. And so then she decides she's going to move to an apartment. And once she moves into this apartment, she starts having visions of this woman who used to live in the apartment, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who you may remember from Queen's Gambit, mm -hmm. and is going to be voicing Princess Peach in the new Mario movie. <laughs> okay. But uh, uh, and Anya Taylor-Joy is, you know, is wants to be a singer and a performer, and so she starts going to this club, uh, and you know, is basically forced by her manager into prostitution. And she's having visions of this past and, you know, it becomes suspicious that Anya Taylor-Joy's character is, you know, uh, is killed. And she wants to solve 
who did this because that person's still out there and it is what her, her dreams are, are setting up, right? So the thriller part is finding out who the killer is and, you know, all that that, that entails. But the horror part is she, in addition to these visions of the dreams, she also has visions of ghosts that like, you know, their hands like reach out of the walls. There's some, some like good quality jump scares. And there's, you know, uh, I mean, it's not like, it, it, I wouldn't say in terms of horror movies, it's not going to be as scary as like The Conjuring or Babadook or, you know, like, you know, like really scary movies. But it's, it's got some of those horror elements that I think a lot of people will really enjoy. But for me, the best part about it is the quality of the cinematography in this. Because when she's having these visions, anytime she passes a mirror, She's like, you know, so like when she's having the vision, you're, you're in the perspective of Anya Taylor-Joy, you're seeing what she's doing. But every time she passes a mirror or a reflective surface, you can see Thomas and McKenzie's character in is, is in the mirror. So Thomas and McKenzie is living the experiences of Anya Taylor-Joy's character. Uh, so they do some really cool shots, like we're walking down the stairs where, the, you know, and they're mirroring each other's, you know, actions, Anya Taylor-Joy and Thomas and McKenzie. It's just really well shot. Uh, which is something that you, if you, like you saw Baby Driver, they do, you know, there's some outstanding, you know, cinematography in that yeah. film and outstanding editing uh, with the way they sync things up for with sounds in, in Baby Driver. But they do that same sort of thing, syncing these images together. It's so good. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Edgar Wright. I love, I love, you know, Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead and I love Baby Driver. Uh, so I was, again, very excited. Uh, about this new movie, but I was hesitant to go see it because I don't like scary movies. But I was like, you know what? It's it's Halloween weekend. I'm gonna go see a scary movie, and if I'm gonna see a scary movie, I'm gonna see one directed by a director I love. So that's why I went and saw Last Night in Soho, and I I highly recommend it. It you know, it's not gonna be your the best horror movie of all time or anything, but it's satisfying and it's just a, a very well made movie. I love it as a movie. Well, you said it wasn't like a great horror movie, but do you think it's a great thriller? I do think it's a, it's an excellent thriller. Okay. Well, that I'm uh, interested. I love thrillers. I will say that, you know, there's like, you know, like most thrillers, if you're like me, you try to identify, you know, who the, the villain is, you know, throughout the movie. You try to pick up on all the clues and everything. They do a really good job of showing you all the clues uh, so that you can figure things out before it's revealed. Uh, so... Some people might say that means they're, they're telegraphing things a little bit, but for me, that it makes it feel like you get to play detective along with the main character, and I kind of like that. So I can see why some people might not like it as much, but I really enjoyed it. See, I guess I'm the opposite. I don't like to try to guess what's going on because I think half of the fun is the surprise of who it is at the end of the movie. So, uh, yeah, I don't ever try to guess kind of ruins it for me but i'm usually not smart enough to like pick up on the hints anyway so i'm always surprised so it works out for me yeah but, but I, I i since you are a fan of thrillers and and you will watch horror movies as well albeit also as a scaredy cat <laughs> i give it a shot you know it, it's in theaters right now uh so you would have to go to a theater to see it but i think it's worth the trip there's a lot of other famous people in there too, right? Oh yeah, it's a it's an excellent cast. Uh, this is uh, Matt Smith, who is from Doctor Who, plays one of the main characters. Diana Rigg, who was you know one of the Bond girls and on on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Uh, Diana Rigg was the Bond girl in that. She had a very storied career. This was her last performance before she passed away. Oh. Uh, so like I mean, there's that's the nucleus of the cast, and they're they're excellent. Oh, and uh, um, I'm forgetting his name. Terrence Stamp is another another great character actor. You know, he's been in uh, uh, too many things to count. I don't know why the first thing I always jump to with him is uh, Terrence Stamp was uh, Chancellor Valorum in <laughs> Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. <laughs> you, you Not remember, his biggest role, but that's but, what I jumped to. <laughs> yeah, but you're a big Star Wars fan, so that makes sense. That's true. He was also General Zod in Superman. The original Superman. I didn't see it. Well, there you go. So that's Last Night in Soho. Jen, do you think you'll go check it out? I mean, I love thrillers. Thriller is definitely my favorite genre, especially when you got a little bit of mystery. Uh, it sounds great to me. What? It, but if if I were to ask you, Jeff, what would you rate it? Hmm. If you ask me, I give it eight, eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. 
out of 10. Okay, so you liked it just as much as Dune. Oh, no, you gave Dune uh, well, a no, I liked it less than Dune. Yes, by a point, right. Yes. Well, that's, I mean, I think that's pretty good for me because if you don't really even like the horror genre and you still gave it an eight, you know. So that being said, because I'm not a horror fan, maybe the reason I liked it so much is because it wasn't so much of a horror film as it was a thriller. But it does, like I said, definitely has a lot of those horror aspects. Yeah, it's uh, not like a slasher or anything. It's not like a slasher. Yeah. That's cool. Although I think slashers can be... I've, uh, as far as horror movies, I've probably seen more slashers than any other genre. On Halloween, I actually watched Halloween for the first time ever. The original Halloween. The original Halloween. That's one of the ones I've seen. I actually um, really like that one. Um, I It made me realize, don't ever be a topless woman, you will get murdered. <laughs> Like, yeah, never be and, naked. Never be naked in a in a movie. You will get murdered. And I I don't know if that was like one of the first movies to really ever do that. But I every single time I was like, oh no, she's naked, and then she dies, and it happens over and over and over again. So I guess horror. I mean, as a horror fan, who doesn't want some TNA? But I guess I didn't realize. You know, they really. I knew it was a very famous movie. So I just didn't expect that much nudity in it because I feel like that kind of diminishes the audience. But they were really love it. I mean, and they made like thirteen of them or whatever. Yeah, so they've definitely made a lot of Halloween movies. Uh, but I haven't, like I said, I watched Halloween. I've also watched Friday the Thirteenth and Nightmare on Elm Street because I wanted to watch like the big three slasher movies. Right? Friday the Thirteenth is bad. It is not a good movie. I don't know how a franchise got made out of that horrible movie. Now, I've heard that well, starting with two, some things change and maybe it's actually better. So maybe I'll go back and give it a shot. But I hated Friday the 13th. Nightmare on Elm Street is excellent. It's my that favorite. That scared the crap out of me. Freddy Krueger <laughs> is the best. That's why everybody always says, who's your favorite horror icon? And there's so many people saying Mike Myers. No. Freddy wins. He is the best. Robert England, and it's funny and witty. And, like, imagine, in my opinion, you can't sleep. That sounds horrible. You're going to sleep no matter what. So, I mean, then what are you going to do about it? Especially with, like, the reason I don't like horror movies isn't so much because I get scared while I'm watching them, but because I get nightmares that night, and then I, I'm unable to sleep. So now you make a movie about having nightmares where the nightmares kill you. That I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can't sleep after this. <laughs> it was risky watching it then. Yep. But I persevered. I, I really, I did actually really enjoy Nightmare on Elm Street. But I think my favorite slasher, uh, slasher films, the Scream series. Scream is great. I watched those again. I used to love those, like, growing up. I loved Scream. And I actually rewatched them a couple years ago. All three of them are, like, pretty solid. Oh, I didn't see four. four. I didn't know there was four. And they have a TV yeah, show now. Yep, and then four came out in 2011, and they just announced another Scream movie is coming out next year in January. I did see that. I did. See, I think that was a preview. So you'll, you'll need preview. to see four before the next one comes out. Did you see four? Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen all of them. And four was also solid? Yeah, it was a solid slasher movie. And wow. I think the thing I like about them so much is that they're making fun of horror movies while also being a horror movie. Yeah. And I keep thinking they're going to run out of ways to innovate on that idea, but every single time they do something a little different that I can appreciate. Yeah. Uh, they're not perfect movies by any means, but... You know, I had fun with all. I had fun with all of them. But and Nev Campbell, right? Is the yeah. I Nev mean, Campbell. Love Nev Campbell, but have you seen The Craft? That's my. Fa it's not a. I guess it's not a. Maybe it's a thriller. I wouldn't call it a horror movie, but that's one of my favorite movies of all time. So good. You should watch it, Jeff. It's amazing. It's about okay. some hot witches. Some hot witches? Some hot witches. Well, it sounds like something <laughs> I might enjoy. <laughs> well, so we got some people in chat here. Uh, our friend Kat says, Chase got to meet Freddy yes. because of Jen. Yes, when we all went to Texas Frightmare Weekend. That was actually, somebody told me, I just launched my YouTube channel today. I haven't announced it. I forgot. But um, apparently... When I did the interview at that convention with Onyx the Fortuitous, that video was released exactly five years on the day that I just launched my new YouTube. I did not realize that that was a coincidence, but 
there you go. You have to check out that interview too. I was dressed as Freddy in that one. So we got people saying Freddy's great. Wes Craven was a genius. Yep, yep, yep. Michael Mary's Michael Myers versus Jason versus Freddy versus Jigsaw. I mean, I have not That's... I have not seen any of the Saw movies because I think they crossed into the line of not not really being a horror movie anymore and just being a gore movie. Yeah. And I'm I went into that idea. Uh, Skezzy Snips likes all horror movies. All <laughs> like them all. <laughs> like them all horror that is. See, lots of people say craft. And lots of people on there with the craft. You got to watch it, Jeff. Our audience thinks the craft is great. So I'm just saying. Underratedly amazing. Sucks the remake. Ain't as good, says Angel Thunder, Mir, and uh, Asher. I can't. I, I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the new one. I don't like when they make new ones of things. It seems weird with horror movies to do remakes to me. I mean, they, they do it all the time, but like, I don't get it because horror movies is one of the few genres that, you know, it holds up, you know, forever because even if the stuff was made with really campy, you know, bad props and blood, the campiness becomes something that you like about it, whether, you know, even, you know, even if it takes away some of the scare factor, I think horror fans just really gravitate towards that you know, in horror movies. So I think the horror movie genre holds up super well, you know, despite the effects not being great all the time. So why do remakes? I don't get it. No new ideas. I mean, that's definitely the reason why they (laughs) keep doing remakes, but at least with like Halloween kills, they've, and and the last couple of Halloween movies, I haven't seen them, but I do know that they've tied the franchise together uh, even more so than it already was with these movies. So, you know, I like when they, they make those attempts to actually like bind all these crazy slasher movies together. You know, it's exciting. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, that, you know, that we got onto horror movies cause of last night in Soho, but I do recommend last night in Soho, especially if you're an Edgar Wright fan. Uh, it did not do well the opening weekend at the box office. Oh, really? Uh, so, and uh, I mean, a lot of people are still going to see Dune. So, um, yeah, I might chalk it up to that. But highly recommend it. Uh, if if you can go Soho, see it safely, you should. I thought it came out in like August. Mm-mm. No, okay. Nope this last uh, this last Thursday. Well, I mean, it might have had some limited release earlier in other parts. Uh, but uh, it opened on Thursday last week. I didn't know that. I thought it was a potential topic for the Pop XP like a couple of months ago. So maybe it was like a limited release or maybe I'm just I mean, We might have been talking about it. We might have been wanting to talk about it just because, it, you know, it was a newly announced Edgar Wright movie and, mm-hmm. you know, Edgar Wright's got some hardcore fans. He should? Well, yeah. He's That's Last Night in Soho. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to check it out based on that recommendation, Jeff. I think that's something I will like. And you'll have to come back and tell me and what you think about it. And then we'll talk about it here. You will ask me what I think about what I asked you. <laughs> it's never going to get old. All right. It's never going to no, get I old. No, I mean, it might get old, but we'll see. <laughs> so what were we talking about next, Jen? Oh, yeah. Okay, so those are our movies for this week. Now we're going to talk about one Really cool comic book, okay? I'm a little biased because I did do right, a let's cosplay. make a disclaimer. Yeah, I did do a cosplay cover for it, just so you know. Speaking of, here it is. This is my cosplay cover for the Painkiller Jane Heartbreaker Kickstarter going on right now, guys. It's the last day. Make sure you check out the campaign. It's really It's the good. last day? It's the last day to get this cosplay cover. And it's also the last day to, hold on, <laughs> to get this other cosplay cover, which is limited to only 100 copies. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, that's pretty cool. But you know what's really cool? This is a completely unedited picture straight out of the camera. I have never, ever printed an unedited picture before. So just saying, guys, really limited. Only can get it on the Kickstarter. Only 100 made. Um, and the story is really good. I like. I definitely think it's... Um, I guess she's kind of like a mercenary, you would say. She gets hired to, like, she, um, someone was kidnapped, and so she's trying to go rescue this person that was kidnapped. And 
it's just like a really fun book. It's only a one shot, so you don't have to worry about 52 cliffhangers. Pages. Fifty-two pages. It's mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about cliffhangers. Or they're they do a pretty good job at the beginning, kind of giving like a brief synopsis of like the character, so you don't have to be super familiar with Painkiller Jane. Um, I think I, I haven't read any Painkiller Jane before this, and you're right. The the first few pages gives you some backstory, explains what makes Painkiller Jane special and why she does what she does. And it just takes a couple of pages and, you know, I'm just like, okay, that's it. That's all I need to know. Now I'm in. And she's a really cool character. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a, Jimmy has been writing her for. Jimmy Palmiotti. Jimmy. Oh yeah. Jimmy Palmiotti. Um, he's been writing her. I want to say like 96, but I'm not really sure. Uh, it's been a while. A very long time. <laughs> and he definitely, he made made her to be a very strong sexy woman and you know we talk about you know if you watched our show and i'm talking about black widow you know she's supposed to be a strong woman and i do not find that to be true but with painkiller jane i think you definitely give that she's got that kind of like no shits attitude uh tough and the art is wonderful i really loved the art in the book there's boobs guys if you like boobs you can see lots of boobs in this book so not my boobs far more than you should uh, read at work i'll tell you that much oh did you do you reading it at work Whoops. <laughs> sorry i should have told you i didn't even think i didn't even think about that whoops yeah don't read it at work it's not safe for work poor jeff i'm sorry that's that's on me <laughs> Yeah, it was, and the art is excellent. All, you know, uh, who who's the artist on it? Uh, Marinelli. I don't know what this I'm, person so I'm is. So not 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 familiar, but the art uh, was excellent, uh, and yeah, character design's really Marinelli. cool. Uh, I I was ho I was I was think I was wondering if how much you were actually going to look like Painkiller Jane. And uh, you're uh, she's quite a bit taller than you are, Jen. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, I'm only five foot, so I have to try to look like super badass and tough, you know, just on the camera. Um, but I was going to say something, and then I like, forgot what it was. Oh, um, that's another thing. You're talking about if I looked like her or not. They actually draw her completely differently for, like, every cover, every issue. So I actually did a whole video on the Paper Films YouTube channel Jimmy asked me to do a video talking about why Painkiller Jane is more of, she's more than just a costume. She's an attitude. So that was a big thing for me. Like, what am I supposed to wear? Everybody draws her differently. It's like, just wear a tank top. It's fine. It's, it's not about what you're wearing. It's about the attitude that you're giving. And I feel like the covers are all really great for that. They have tons of different covers by tons of different artists on their Kickstarter. Um, not just my cosplay covers, but... Um, uh, Having read it, I gotta say, you carried the attitude perfectly in uh, your costume covers. Thanks, you did a great Jeff. job. Thank you. I was trying to look real tough, so it was fun. It's hard for me to buy you as like tough because I, I know, know you. I know I'm not tough at all. There's nothing tough about me. I even have to practice my like tough faces in the camera. You know, try to look really scary. Well, yeah, pulled it off. Thanks for, thanks, for at least two pictures because those made it onto the covers. <laughs> I, oh, but I did edit four, so I guess I looked tough in four pictures. So okay. there you go. yeah, I did a pretty good job, I think. So, yeah, I, and as far as the book goes, the the story was uh, it was interesting. I, you know, it, it kind of like uh, gave me rush hour vibes, uh, like the first rush hour. You know, trying to protect you know someone while you're traveling and all yeah, that she's stuff she's not a know. superhero it's not, not like a a, it's not like a capes and suit like she, save the she world has, kind of she thing. has some special healing ability yeah she just heals really fast uh super strength not super strength not like hulk super strength but she's very strong and tough and has like a healing factor i think that's what i like is that you know she has some abilities that kind of gives that gives her some greater you know, she she has greater abilities than the average person in the rest of the book, but it's not so much greater that you know she you never feel like she's in danger. You feel like she's in danger still, pretty regularly, uh, and you get to see her overcome those challenges. And I I I thought it was excellent. Really like, and it's a like I said, it's fun. Like it's just kind of like a fun book. It doesn't. I don't get the impression it takes itself like super seriously. Like I said, it's not like a Superman or Batman like 
flirting kind of character. Um, she's kind of silly, witty. You know, has some like sarcastic, very sarcastic. And uh, she gives it, she, you know, the other character. She gives it as good as she gets. There's yeah. characters who talk shit to her. She talks shit back. Uh, so you know, it's it's definitely not taking itself too seriously, which I really appreciate. Calamity Gannon in chat wants to ask: uh, Is she like an anti-hero? Uh, yeah, definitely. She definitely tries to do the right thing, but she definitely does it in her own way, which might not necessarily be like the safest or most like. Uh, I, I would say a little Punisher esque, but with a little more tie into actual police work. Yeah. Then. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's good. I like it. It's fun. And I read a lot of their, I've read almost all their, not all their books, but a lot of their compilations and stuff like that. And so it's, this one's a good one shot. It's a really good, just a fun, I don't know what else to say. It's just like a fun story. I didn't, I enjoyed it. You know, I wasn't like, I wasn't disappointed by like the ending. I really liked the ending uh, too. So it ended, it wasn't, didn't leave me hanging. It had like a really good ending that I thoroughly enjoyed. So I really liked it. I thought it was great. Not, not just saying that because I did the cover. I genuinely really liked it. Yeah, I did too. And, you know, coming from someone who had never read any previous Painkiller Jane stuff, you know, the, the fact of the matter is now I'm actually curious to read more of it because I <gasps> did thoroughly enjoy it. Well, they come out with a new one every year on Kickstarter. So, guys, today's the last day. Make sure you go back to Kickstarter. Get the cool book. Get the comic covers. Get all the stuff. You can get it digitally for, like, six bucks. You get the whole 52-page one-shot. So... It's pretty cool. Just saying. Oh, look, Patrick Wedge. He is amazing. One of the coolest guys in comic books. He helps Jimmy Palmiotti with his Kickstarters. Super great guy. Always really awesome. They do an amazing job packing all their Kickstarter books. Never any damage. They You can get them graded and they always come back at like a 9.7 or 9.8, like super high. Like tons of different um, stretch goals and stuff they're doing. And Patrick is just amazing. He is so nice to me. I love Patrick. So, yeah, she's an anti-hero in a way. She does things that the good guys might not do because she like kind of she's not afraid to cross the line. So, but she's like I said, trying to do the right thing, but she definitely does it in her own way. Hi, Patrick. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Pink Killer Jane. Check it out. Please go to the Kickstarter and and support that. Uh, Right away. Right away. Uh, so, uh, I believe we have one more topic, but I didn't get to find out what this topic was from you, Jen. I know. We only have one thing left. Jeff, guess what I started watching this week? So the only thing you told me was that it's something that I have also watched. Yes. I and think so, as someone who watches just a crap ton of stuff, I have no idea where to begin. Uh Brooklyn Nine Nine? Uh, no, I have seen. I have seen it. I do enjoy it, but no, I have not. Have not. It's not. That. Okay. Any well, I'm not guesses? just gonna sit here and guess. Do you? Okay. <laughs> we'll be here forever if I just sit here guessing. Well, <laughs> there's two versions. The version that I personally enjoy is Jeff Lasso. I think that that is really my. <laughs> that's Jeff my favorite. Lasso. <laughs> I, I even left the mustache. I don't know if you can see it. I can see you gave gave me Ted Lasso's mustache. Even I wish my, have, my mustache came in that color. You only have <laughs> you already have your own mustache, but I made it better. No lie, I, I'm I'm very curious to hear what you think of Ted Lasso. I know I, that's why I didn't I want to tell show. you. That's why I, I didn't want to show. tell you what it was. Because... It's so freaking wholesome. Okay, <laughs> so. Yeah, that's my, that's my question. Well, if you ask me, if you ask me, <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to get it right. It's always going to sound like butters. Try um, to do like a, a Robert De Niro impression. Like, if, if you ask me. Well, if you ask me. There it is. That's Robert De Niro. Nailed it. <laughs> it's butters playing Robert De Niro. <laughs> I'll get it right one day. I just need to practice for a couple of hours. Anyways, Ted Lasso. Um, everybody loves it. 
Everybody yeah. loves Ted Lasso. I had to know. I had to know what it was about. Which I now now that I know that you've watched it, I'm already worried because the fact that everybody else you know is talking about how much they love it, I'm skeptical about how much you're gonna like it. <laughs> um, I don't hate it. I she don't doesn't hate it. it. I do. <laughs> Put I it on the board. <laughs> I don't hate it, and it's a show that I think I would hate. So the fact that I don't hate a show that is a show that I should hate, um, really, I think it says a lot about it. Um, my one question, which I feel like you've already answered, because I've only seen like three or four episodes, um. Is it that wholesome, the whole show? No, it's not. Okay. The characters are not always flawless. They have flaws. And in fact, they really explore those flaws a lot more in the later episodes of season one and then throughout season two. Uh, it, it becomes The show overall becomes less about soccer and more about the relationships and the personalities of the characters. Uh, so you don't actually have to be a big soccer fan to uh, fully grasp everything that's going on in Ted Lasso, which to some people is a disappointment. But, you know, to me, I, I, I really do think the characterizations are the highlight because there's so many characters that are extremely likable right from the jump. And then there's characters that you really hate from the jump that you can see them grow uh, as they are influenced by other characters, you know. So it is it is a wholesome thing. But there, there's as much as you see characters grow, there are other characters that you see falter uh, and and become worse people. <laughs> but see, I think that is one of my complaints about it. And you get it's because it's so wholesome. Is that all of these like rude characters that you're not supposed to like? You still get very frequent glimpses of them being a good person. So they don't just like. Like the 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 woman, the blonde haired woman, that's the owner. You know, she's supposed to be this bitch, and I'm gonna destroy them. But then the model girl is like nice to her, and so suddenly she's not a bitch anymore. And it's just like, oh, so you just need one person to be nice to you, and it totally changes like your whole attitude. But... I think if Juno Temple was nice to me, that would change my life. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, <laughs> um, but. Oh. So I think the Patrick. reason. Okay, go, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, Patrick uh, dresses Coach Beard for Halloween. He's the best character. I love he, Coach Beard. He's the best character, and I would watch his TV show. There's an episode in season two, so you have to keep watching because there's an episode in season two that is all about Coach Beard, and you're gonna love that episode. Oh, Jeff. really? Okay. Yeah, it's a fantastic episode. I will definitely uh, continue watching it because it's something that, like, when I'm done working. I sit on the couch and I watch Ted Lasso. I almost fall asleep every episode, but it's like I was trying to watch, I watched every episode of Peaky Blinders and that is so hard to like be working all day and then you sit on the couch, you just want to relax and then I can't understand this, any words that they are saying so then I got to read the subtitles. So it's not a relaxing show. Ted Lasso is a very relaxing, just it is. chill. It's a, it's a very good show to unwind with and I think what, what I like so much about it is when so many other shows take the approach that at their heart, most people are bad. Ted Lasso takes the approach that at their heart, most people are good. Yeah. And, and so as a perpetual optimist, that is that's true. That, I've known that him for a long that time. That's definitely true. really, you know, speaks to me because it's what I hoped the world is actually like, you know? <laughs> so uh, it, it's, I think it's a super uplifting show, but it also doesn't shy away from like some, really serious topics and i think uh um you'll really relate to some of it as, as you advance on into the series because the the first few episodes are a lot of fun but they're just introducing the characters you don't get to really know them as as much as you end up you know until later on in the in the season it it is yeah like like patrick says here in the chat stick with it great writing interesting characters great dichotomy of what you think will be is not so they, they there are some surprises and uh, I, I really do hope you'll stick with it, Jen, if for no other reason than to see that Coach Beard episode in season two. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> like I said, you know, it's not usually my kind of show, but I do appreciate the fact that it's a good relaxing show. I sit down and it, it is just wholesome. It does just kind of make you go, aww. It's like if a TV show gave you a hug. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that for sure. All right. Now I don't want to watch it anymore. 
<laughs> Jen doesn't like hugs. I don't like okay. hugs. Well, I'm sorry. Then uh, pretend I didn't say that and, and go ahead and watch the show. That's okay. I'll watch. I'll but finish yeah. watching it. Actually, I think I'm watching it on your Apple TV for whenever we watch the YZ Oh, story. my God. Yeah. I, guess. <laughs> I was like, you're oh. not the only one. I was like, we you're don't not have the only Apple one. TV. And I just logged on to my PlayStation. And I was like, oh, look. I got it. I got it. 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 Whoops. <laughs> you're not the only one. My brother and, and sister-in-law also watch it on my Apple TV account. <laughs> yeah. I want to, I'm kind of still curious. We only watched like the first two episodes of YZ Story. kind of want to go back and watch I was actually honestly kind of waiting for you to go back and watch more of it to tell me if I should continue watching it. All right. I can do that. All right. <laughs> oh, by the way, everybody, before we end the show and before I forget, I just want to say this show is only going to be every other Wednesday. This is not an every Wednesday 7.30 show. It'll be every other week. So every time we meet, that's why we're not really necessarily sticking to current things. We're just talking about whatever we've watched or read in the two-week time period. So sometimes it'll be new stuff. Sometimes it'll be old stuff. Um, but so you never know. You never know what we're going to talk about because we don't even yeah. know. Sometimes it might be you know video games that, that we've been playing or, like we said, movies, TV shows, comic books. God forbid, actual literature, you know? <laughs> I know Dune would have been a great topic to talk about. The See, book, like, but... Dune actually, like, I, I might actually read that. For some reason, I, I don't always count sci-fi in the same, like, it's not like I'm reading To Kill a Mockingbird. Like, imagine if we came on the show and I was like, this week, Jen, if you ask me, we should talk about To Kill a Mockingbird. You'd be like, no, Jeff, we're not going to talk about To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> I've read it. I think I like, I read it, what, in, like, the fourth In high school, we all, you read it. Okay. Fourth grade. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Time is not a thing to me. If you read, if you read *The Kill a Mockingbird* in the fourth grade, that would explain a lot of how you became the person that you. you have. <laughs> now I need to read it just so I understand <laughs> what you're trying to say about me in that one. But I would like to say real quick, Fishhawk72, first time chat, first time chat from a viewer. I did not know Twitch alerted you on such a thing, so that's cool. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for being here. Hi. So that's cool. I didn't know they did that. Um, so yeah, every other Wednesday, 7.30. Uh, but Jen, you do other things other than this show every other Wednesday. Uh, where can people find you on them internets that they can uh, follow you to know when you're going to come you know, on Twitch and, and, and other services with new content? Twitter is the main place. Twitter, Jen Van Damsel. Um, I, it's where I, every time I go, I usually post in the beginning of the day when I'm going to go live or the day before. And then I post right when I go live, which I did not do today. I forgot about that till just now. Um, yeah. And then just random stuff that I happen to be thinking or going through or memes and pictures. I post a lot of like my, my cosplay progress pictures and stuff on there. I just did my Dark Phoenix and posted that on there. I do polls sometimes. Uh, Instagram is going to be a more for, um, I do post some like behind the scenes and the descriptions of like the photo that I posted. That's where some of my announcements come from. Um, I don't know. Just, I have Twitter. I have an Instagram. I have, oh, I launched, I already mentioned this already, but I just launched my YouTube. I uploaded five videos. Um, last night at like two o'clock in the morning and then i haven't announced so here's the announcement for the first time ever i have youtube content oh wow i think we both wow. did it we both did it thanks jeff i appreciate that no i'm a team player yeah um <laughs> right now i have just like an intro video introducing myself i have a, a what's in my i have an episode of what's in my sack that was something that we used to do. I have a whole episode now. There will be lots of me opening my sack and showing you my sack contents. Uh, there are two videos about my store. Even if you're not interested in getting anything from my store, you might want to check out the videos. They get a little weird. That's all I'm going to say. It's pretty entertaining. Um, and then my, like we're talking about Painkiller Jane. I have the entire behind the scenes video I show you all the post tests, lighting tests, uh, before and after edits of the covers, um, lots of stuff on on that video. I think it's like 30 minutes just going through all the thought process and creation of the painkiller Jane. Um, 
Wait, watch this. You can see how this comet cover came to be on that video. So, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all that's on there right now. I'm going to be putting, in case you ever miss an episode, if you ask me, it will be on my YouTube. I will export this and put that on there. Um, I'm going to do some, like, uh, Photoshop editing as I, like, edit stuff. Not tutorials because I never know what I'm doing. But anyways, go watch the YouTube intro video. That'll explain all the stuff that I'm going to do on there. So What's what's the name of the channel? Jennifer Van oh, Damsel. Jennifer Van Just Damsel Jennifer. on YouTube. I'm Jennifer Van Damsel everywhere except for Twitter because it was too long. So on Twitter, I'm just a Jen Van Damsel, but everywhere else is Jennifer Van Damsel. So go check out Jennifer Van Damsel on YouTube and please subscribe there. Uh, oh, and yes. go ahead and hit the bell and uh, so that you'll get notifications every time Jennifer updates and uploads another video. Yeah. So do that for Jen. And I'm going to shamelessly plug yes. myself. Uh, wait, I'm wait on... hold on. But Jeff, enough about me. Where can I find more Grizz? Well, if you ask me <laughs> where to find more Grizz. Uh, on Twitter at Good Game Grizz, on Twitch at Good Game Grizz, where I, I you know will play video games and things like that. Uh, I also uh, open Pokemon cards on my Twitch channel from time to time with my buddy Dustin. Uh, so if you're at all interested in that, you can tune tune in for those. Uh, I have a movie podcast. With, so if you liked me talking about movies here today, I do that a lot. And you can check out Remember the Film on YouTube and on podcast services all over all the different podcast services check it out there uh but if you just want to keep up with what i'm what i'm doing Twi twitter's the way to do it at good game grizz Yay! that's it <laughs> how exciting we did it that's our first show of if you ask me is that better i try not that to was actually it's getting better okay. it really is i'm practicing i just need to practice less butters more better <laughs> the butters is my favorite butters is great and you do a great Butters impression, whether it be on purpose or not. I need to remake my <laughs> Professor Chaos costume. That's a for sure need to do. Okay. Well, so we don't know what we're going to talk about next uh, episode, but like we said, follow Jen Van Damsel on Twitter and she will share some of the stuff that we're going to talk about uh, in two weeks once we've decided what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to try to share that information on Mondays. I think we agreed to give each other our topics on like Mondays. So then I can post and let you guys know what we're going to be talking about um, before then. Personally, so. I'm going to try to give you that information sooner and, and vice versa so that we have time if we want to, to watch the things like I didn't get to watch good time this time, uh, but who knows, maybe the next thing, next time, next movie you want to talk about, maybe I will have time to watch it. And so just, We'll, we'll try to let you all know ahead of time so that you can watch as well and share your opinions on on in the chat on what you thought of these movies and TV shows. Yeah. That went oh. so well. That was awesome. That was great. I, great time. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I know this is, like, different than my normal Twitch and YouTube content, but Jeff and I are awesome. We've been friends for, like, 100 years, and... We just make a great team. It's been it's been eleven years now. I mean, that's a hundred. That's, that's almost a hundred. That's, that's pretty close. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot longer than I know most people. So, I mean, you're yeah. definitely like top ten people I've known the longest. So, wow, I know it's pretty crazy. Jen kills most people after she's known them more than ten years. So, <laughs> Jeff, that's supposed to be our secret. Now I'm gonna have to kill you. Son of a gun! Whoops, I blew <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm going to pull a Freddy. I'm going to come for you in your nightmare. No, 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 do no. Don't even joke. Oh, don't no. Joke okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean it. Okay. All right. You can kill me, just not in my dreams. <laughs> just any, any other time. Just not there. <laughs> Let me know what's convenient for you. <laughs> I'll be sleeping, too, so I guess that's true. I don't want to interrupt my sleep. Okay. You ready? All right. Yep. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for hanging <laughs> out, you guys. Um, I'm going to stream, but I don't know Friday or Saturday yet. Sarah is coming over Sat or Friday to help me organize my office. So it'll depend how long that takes. But if not, I'm Saturday. So I'll, but I will post on my Twitter 
what day and what time and everything. We're probably gonna, I'll probably open up my sack and then we'll play, we'll go back to playing some Knights of the Old Republic episode like five or whatever episode I'm on. So. Are you doing KOTOR or SWOTOR? Oh, yes. Not Knights of the Old Republic, just the Old Republic, the MMO. The old, gotcha. Yeah, I, I always do that. It's really, they should have named it anything else. So anything confused. else. <laughs> just anything else. <laughs> And this will be interesting because the expansion is coming out where they're changing the combat of the game, actually. So we'll see. Now we'll have to talk about that on the next episode of If You Ask Me. Love it so much. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. See you later. <laughs> have a good night. I have to. How do I turn on? Okay, I also. You you in? Yeah, yeah in stream. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for hanging out. You're awesome. See you in a couple weeks. Bye.